Hey, Ascension family and friends, it's Pastor Doug. It's so good to be with you today. Even though it's just online, it's still good. It's good to be with you, to be able to share God's word with you, to go to Jesus together with you to find rest for our souls. Certainly, I appreciate you joining us online today, wherever you're watching. You know, over the last couple of days, we've had some some snowy weather, some rain, and some ice, and the leadership, and the worship planning teams, and, and those who, who make Sunday morning happen, made the decision to, to go on the side of caution, to keep everybody safe, and to just do it online today. Um, another thing we thought about is we're definitely a regional church, which means we have people that drive up to 45 minutes, to up to an hour to get here sometimes. And so we wanted everybody to be safe, and so we just thought best to do it online with you today. And so here we are. We're worshiping together. We thank God for this blessing of technology that we can still do this and, and find some time to gather in God's word. A uh, couple of quick things, though. Uh, before we really get into it this morning, a couple of things to remember. First of all, because we're doing this online only, we're not going to have a, a full-blown service like maybe we normally do. Like, we're not going to have some of the music because you don't want me singing a solo um, and leading you in that. So, so what we're going to do with the music is we're going to put those links for those songs that, that we want to sing this morning down in the comments and, and in the posts so that you can spend some time listening to those later with your family or with yourself, however you want to do it. Also, we're not going to have all of the, the same kind of prayers and readings maybe we normally do. It's kind of a condensed version today, so, so please be aware of, of that as we worship. A uh, couple of other things, we would love to connect with you, and there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can connect through our app. You can connect through our website and go to our, our online media page, and there's that opportunity to connect with us. Let us know uh, who's worshiping with us today, where you're worshiping, and if there's anything we can do to help you in your next steps in getting to know Jesus better, we would certainly would love for you to do that. Uh, maybe another also easy, simple way is you can just put a comment. If you're watching on Facebook or, or YouTube, just put a comment. Leave us a comment. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know how the good news of Jesus is impacting you and your family today and this week. We'd love to hear from you. Also, there's an opportunity if you go online, if you're so moved to give an offering, you can do that as well online on our website. Uh, we certainly would appreciate anything you give because we cannot do this ministry without your generosity. So with all those things in mind, maybe this would be a good time to mute your phones, and maybe even turn them off, unless you're watching on your phone, to set aside the distractions, to grab your cup of coffee, grab your, your kids or your grandbabies or your family, whoever's around you, and snuggle up on the couch and, and get ready to spend some time in God's word in the arms of Jesus. Let's open with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you this day. Lord, we, we first want to pause and just thank you for the opportunity that, that we get to do this, that we have the technology that you have blessed us with to gather in our homes and with our families to worship you, to hear the good news of, of who you are and what you've done for us. So as we spend time in your word today, bless us as you remind us of so many things that you want us to know and to believe. Help us to, to check out from the stresses and distractions of the world around us and the troubles and the stresses and the issues that maybe we're, we've gone through this past week. Help us to, to, to listen to you. Help us to find comfort in you and remove the distractions from our minds and our hearts so that may, we may see you clearly today and always. We pray all this in Jesus our Savior's name. Amen. So today, we are, again, continuing in our sermon series called Remember. And we want to look at a section of God's Word, before we get too deep into the message today, from Luke chapter 19. It's actually not going to serve as, as the basis for the message today, but, but I want to read it before we go any further, because here in Luke chapter 19... Jesus reminds us of what his purpose is. In other words, Jesus tells us why he came to this earth in the first place. And so, 
as I read this section of God's word, I want you to think about that, right? Think about and answer the question, who is Jesus, but, but more so, what is Jesus' purpose? Why did he come? Not just to a man named Zacchaeus, but to this world, okay? That's what I want you to do. Fill in your own blank mentally at home. What is Jesus' purpose? Luke 19 begins, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When, when Jesus reached the spot, he, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed Jesus gladly. Now all the people saw this and they began to mutter, Ugh, he, that is Jesus, has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and he said to the Lord, Look, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Friends, welcome back to week number three of our sermon series called Remember. And if you've been following along with us, and if you haven't, go back and watch week one and two sometime this week. But in this series, we've been looking at the, some things that God wants us to remember. Things that, that your God and, and my God, our God, does not want us to forget. Like in week number one, we were called to remember who he is. Right? Remember who, who Jesus is. And, and at his baptism, and, and seeing Jesus with power and authority, we were reminded that Jesus is our brother. He's our friend. He's our savior. And he's our God. Right, that truth is something that God wants you to never forget, that Jesus is your God and your Savior who came for you. Last week, kind of shift gears a little bit, and, and God called us to remember who we are. Right, God called us to remember that because of Jesus and what he has done, the Father has poured out his love on us. Right, The, the, the writer said he, the God lavished his love on us, that now we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. And so the reality is it doesn't matter what you think about yourself. It doesn't matter what others might say, good or bad. Really, the only thing that matters at the end of the day is who Jesus calls you to be. The only thing that really matters is, is what Jesus says about you, and you know what he says? He says that you are his child. Well, today, as we continue to think about who Jesus is and, and who we are because of Jesus, he also wants us to remember what our purpose is. Right? Because Jesus, in his word, he says that he has given us a purpose. Right? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about what your purpose in life is? I, I thought a lot about that this past week. What is your purpose? Well, today, God wants to help us remember that. What is our purpose? Because he gives it to us. And in order to remember what our purpose is, we're going to look at a section of God's word from Luke chapter 8. And there's, to be honest, there's a lot of sections of God's word that we could turn to where God reminds us what our purpose is, right? To love God and love others, to, to use our gifts in service to God and service to others. Um, there, there's different passages and different ways that, that God describes our ultimate purpose but, but we want to zero in on what God says in Luke 8 so that we can remember and never forget what our purpose 
truly is. Take a listen. They sailed to the region of the Gerizims, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When Jesus saw him, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, what's your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and Jesus gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerizines asked Jesus to leave, because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away, and he told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. I think in a lot of ways, this scene is kind of hard to imagine. Because this guy here, this demon-possessed guy, is the kind of guy that they make horror movies about. Right? I mean, this is the kind of guy they, they, make, they make demonic exorcism kind of movies about. He's possessed by not just one demon, but a legion of demons, many demons. They had got this guy isolated, and alone. He was a menace to himself, and he was a menace to others. In fact, right, we're even told that the townspeople tried to put him under lock and key. They tried to chain him up. They even gave him a guard because, because half the time he was running around stark naked, raging mad, demonic possessed. And so this man was definitely living a life of isolation, a life of hopelessness, a life that seemed to have no purpose. And that's exactly where Satan wanted him. Satan wanted this guy locked up under his grip with no hope, with no chance of help, with no purpose or meaning, a life of lonely, tormenting existence. And you know what? That's what Satan wants for you too. Right? He, he wants to think, you to think, that you are all alone. He, he wants you to think that nobody's got your back, that you're in a hopeless situation, that you have no purpose. And that's what he wants to do. He, he wants you to think that, that there's no escape for whatever you're dealing with. There's no freedom for whatever difficulties you're enduring. No, he wants you to live a life of isolation, alone, scared, and afraid, with no hope and no purpose. So let me ask you, have you ever felt like that? 
Have you ever felt like you were all alone? Have you ever felt that, that, that in this moment or that moment that, that people maybe you thought had your back, that they, they didn't? Have you ever felt sad? Because of some difficulty or struggle you're enduring? Have you ever felt like maybe that pain or that suffering, that, that broken relationship, that broken heart, that, that financial struggle, that health issue, that, that it would never end that there was no light at the end of the tunnel? Have you ever felt hopeless, like, like you're never gonna you're never gonna beat that pet sin or that addiction? Or those internal thoughts, that anxiety or that depression? But have you ever felt isolated and alone? Because that's what Satan wants. That's what he wants. He wants you separated. And alone, separated from your family, your friends, your church, and all those support systems that God gives you, because that's where Satan does his best work. And you know when he's at the top of his game? Satan is at the top of his game when you're going through some things, right? Like maybe when things are going really well, Satan just kind of stands off on the sidelines and, and he kind of just watches from a distance because things are going well. And that alone can be a distraction from, from God, but, but you know what Satan does his best work and when he pounces is when things go south. When you're struggling. When you're hurting. When you're dealing with grief or sadness, when you're having difficulties and issues in your family, at work, <laughs> with your friends, at school, right? When, when maybe you're, you're having work issues and, and the devil says, ah, it's never going to get better. M maybe it's a fallout with one of your family members and he says, you don't need to be around them anyway. Maybe it's something that came up with somebody here at church and he says, you know what, they're always meddling and they're always trying to get at you. You know what, they're your enemy. But it's often when we're going through some things that, that Satan likes to pounce on that and that's when he does his most deadly, damning work. And how do I know this? Because I know Satan has done a good job on my own heart and in my own life at times. And he's done a good job attacking those that I love the most. And you know what happens when we struggle like that? You know what happens when we go through things? We often withdraw. I sometimes don't always know why that is, but when we're going through issues, kind of our natural tendency is to withdraw, to pull away from oftentimes the very people that want to help us, we withdraw. And we don't open up. We, we don't confide in them. We don't confess to them. And again, Satan loves that. He wants us alone. In fact, 14 years of being a pastor almost, one of the number one things that, that I often talk about with people who are struggling, how's your devotional life? How's your worship life? How is your prayer life? Oftentimes, you know what the answer is? It's not very good, right? People withdraw. People withdraw. And we tell ourselves we're fine. We, we tell ourselves we can figure it out. We tell ourselves, well, we can't be open and honest because what are they going to think? What are they going to say? And so we often, we often stay isolated and alone in a world of isolation alone. And so our pain <laughs> and our troubles don't get treated with the good news of Jesus. Instead, we, we meditate and we medicate with a bottle of pills. We, we self-medicate with, with, with another drink, a, another show on Netflix, a, another distraction to keep our minds off of things, right? 
And the whole while we convince ourselves that, that we can deal just fine on our own. In fact, we convince ourselves that we have to because we don't want to burden anybody with our struggles. But that's when Satan's sinister plan comes into effect. And it's almost foolproof. Right? Satan had this guy in our lesson right where he wanted him. Isolated and alone, raving, crazy, mad, in a life that seemed to be helpless and hopeless with no purpose until he showed up. Right? Until Jesus came and set this guy free. And Jesus does. Right? We heard about that in our reading that Jesus drives out the demons, he sets him free. And then we're told that the guy wants to go with Jesus. I mean, that's natural, right? This guy just helped him out, just set him free. He wants to go with Jesus. And then imagine the guy's surprised when Jesus says, no. Right? Jesus says no, and he says this to him. He says, return home and tell how much God has done for you. Right? Jesus wants this guy to go back home and tell others what God had done for him. And maybe I'm guessing, at least at first, this guy doesn't want to. And he can kind of understand why, right? The last time, most everybody in his family, among his friends, among his town, townsmen, right, the last time they saw him, he was naked and raging, mad. And now Jesus says, go back and tell them what God has done for you. I mean, who's going to believe him? Who's going to listen? Who's going to be the first one that, that invites him over to the family dinners again? Right, who's going to be the first one that says you can come to your niece's birthday party with all those kids there because, because it seems like you're normal, right? Who, who's going to be the first person that says maybe it's time that you come back to church? Right, who's going to do that? Who's going to listen to what he has to say? Yet it's those people that Jesus says you have to go back and you, you must tell them all that God has done for you. And he does. And that brings us to the bigger picture this morning. Remembering our purpose. You know, if you want to know what the purpose is of any company, of any business, of any church, even individuals have this too, right? You can take a look at their mission statement. It will tell you who they are and what their beliefs and core values are. What's their principles? In other words, their purpose and reason for existing. Did you know that God has a mission statement too? God's mission, God's purpose is that he wants all people to know the truth. He wants all people to come to a knowledge of Jesus. He wants all people saved, right? God's mission statement is to seek and to save all people, not just a certain group, not just people who, who maybe seem to, to, to deserve it, not just good church-going folk, not just white Lutheran Germans or black Southern Baptists, not just Democrats or Republicans or people who vote this way or live this way or people we think he should say, right? No, God's mission is to seek and to save all people. He wants all people to come to a knowledge of the truth, know him and believe in him. And that's exactly why Jesus came. See, Jesus came and Jesus knew his purpose. Jesus knew his mission. That's why he showed up at Zacchaeus' house that day. Right? Zacchaeus was, was a cheat. He was a thief. Right? Tax collectors were looked down on. You even heard in the lesson where they kind of muttered to themselves, man, this guy welcomes sinners, and he eats with them. Oh, that's gross. They thought Jesus was horrible for eating a meal with Zacchaeus the sinner. But that's why Jesus came. And he came to seek and to save the lost. Zacchaeus was lost. Jesus found him, forgave him, and saved him. Right? That's why Jesus came and he hung out with tax collectors and prostitutes and, and all the other riffraff that people thought Jesus had no business hanging out with. That's why he came, because he came to seek and save the lost. He came to seek and save and forgive the sinner. And here's the reality, friends. There's no other kind of people. He came to seek and to save the lost. That means he came to seek and to save you. Right? Jesus came to this earth to fix what you and I had broken. Jesus came to earth to seek out and to forgive and to save us. Jesus came on a rescue mission to seek us out, to find us when we were once lost and dead. To, to breathe life into us again. To wash us of sins. To make us his child and to snatch us out of the pits of hell itself. 
You see, guys, God's purpose from day one was always to seek and save the lost. He was always to seek and save you. That's why he did what he did. For all the times that we have made our purpose about self-serving, self-seeking, Jesus made it about looking out and finding you. To save you. That's why he was willing to even go all the way to a cross to lay down his life and die so that you might live forever with him. Right? Because Jesus wanted to spend eternity, eternity with you so badly that his purpose and mission always was and always will be you. Now, if that were the end of the story, we could say amen. Just like if Jesus drives out the demons, heals this guy, and that was the end of the story, that would be great. I mean, we could, but it's not. It wasn't the end of the story for this guy, and it's not the end of the story for us. Right? Jesus healed this man and gave him a purpose to tell others what God had done for him. And Jesus has given the same purpose and mission to you and me. Right? To go and tell others about him. To go and tell others what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. And you know how he wants us to do it? He wants us to do it in our families. He wants us to go back to our families, to our friends, to work, to school, to the people he has placed into our lives and tell them the amazing things that God has done for us so that they too may know about a God who loves them. Right? God wants, God wants us to be that kind of people in our families, at work, and here at church. God wants pastors, after hearing some of the deepest, darkest secrets and sins of the members of the church, to look at them and say, there is now no condemnation. God forgives you. Yes, even for that sin. He died for that one too. God wants us, who might know the baggage of our family and friends, we might know their insecurities, their failures as a parent, their, their pet sins and their addictions, to say, it's all right, Jesus forgives you. He wants us to show the same kind of love and mercy to those who are sinful and struggling, just like God has shown to us when we were caught in sin and struggling. Right? He, he, wants, he wants those of us who know about that person's marriage who's falling apart or that person's addiction or how they drank too much or how they said something that in anger that ruined a relationship to, to the next time we see them, not to ostracize them, not to look down on them, not, not, to, not to hammer them with their sins, but to welcome them with open arms. And God wants us to love and care for one another, to share with each other what God has done for us because it's what God has done for them too. Right? To give hope to the hopeless, to give confidence to the doubting, to give forgiveness to the sinner who's struggling. Right? God wants us to tell others what he has done for us and what he has done for them so that they might know too. And if, just imagine, right? Just imagine how things could and would change if we lived out our purpose. Just imagine how things could and would change if we actually started focusing on Jesus. If we opened our eyes to see the opportunities around us and focus on him. Imagine how our lives would change if we started every day focused on Christ and what Jesus has done for us. Right? Imagine how things would change if we stopped focusing on ourselves and focused on Jesus. Imagine how different your day would go if Jesus was your focus. But if you started each day with a cup of coffee and an extra dose of Jesus instead of worrying about the next things on your list. Right, I'll tell you what would happen. It doesn't mean that all your pain and struggles and trials and stresses would magically disappear, but you would be equipped with the love of Jesus to endure and get through them. You would have the guy who says he will get you through them on your team. Right? Imagine what would happen. Imagine what would happen if we reminded others and, and they reminded us, especially on those days that we're struggling, that we've made a mess of our lives, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus. You are free. You are a child of God. Because he won the victory. Right? What, if, what if we weren't, we're, weren't so concerned about those things that don't matter and don't last? How would our lives be different if we focus on Jesus and our purpose of telling others what he has done for us and them telling us the same thing so that we remember it? Imagine. What, if it, what would happen if we did that as a church? 
What would happen if, as a church, we, we weren't so concerned all the time about, about budgets and bottom lines and, and paying off mortgages and, and buildings, and we were more focused on Jesus and sharing him with others? Right? What if we didn't get so worked up about what that person's doing or what they're not doing? What if we didn't get so upset about, about the, the kids making noise in the back or, or what kind of music's being played or whether or not we're getting what we think we want as if church is a Walmart that we can just demand our, our, our purchases are met? Right? What would happen if we spent more, more energy loving people and inviting them to hear the good news and building each other up, instead of criticizing, instead of assuming the worst, instead of getting upset if it isn't our way, what would happen if we actually made our focus about Jesus? Or if we actually remembered our purpose as a church to show the light of Jesus to others, what would happen? You know, friends, I've got to be honest with you. Ascension is in the middle of and really embarking on what's going to be a unique, stressful, and maybe at times difficult journey ahead. Right? Having a pastoral vacancy, trying to search for a new pastor, saying goodbye to the old one, those can be very stressful and very troubling and str- times for a church and can cause all kinds of issues. And you know what? Satan is ready to pounce. Right? Satan is ready to, to get up in here and to divide and conquer because that's what he does the best. Right? He wants us divided. He wants us isolated. He wants us alone. And he wants you to forget about your purpose. Right? He wants you to get into your own little groups and your own little cliques and, and grumble and complain about what that group's not doing for you or about what they're not saying for you, about how they're not doing it right or how you would do it different. That's what Satan wants. Right? Satan wants the members of the church to maybe be suspicious of the leadership. Right? They're not doing what we think they should be doing. And Satan wants you to be uncharitable, and he doesn't want you to take their words and actions in the kindest possible way. He doesn't want you to put your trust and confidence in him. He wants you to be angry with them and maybe even put them down. And he wants the leaders... And those entrusted with with your care, he wants them to get discouraged. He wants them to to maybe wonder if anybody's got their back. He he wants them to maybe even be tempted to throw in the towel. That's what Satan wants. He wants you to forget your purpose. And as your pastor of almost eight years, I, I love you too much to not say that to not remind you of that, to not maybe even call you on that because because maybe some of that's already happened and you've either been dishing it out or on the receiving end and God's not okay with that. But I want to tell you the good news is this. There is hope, right? Repent if maybe you've let Satan divide and cause problems and then turn to Jesus who's going to remind you of who he is and what he's done for you. Turn to Jesus who says, I forgive you even for that sin and I'm going to remind you again of what your purpose is and your purpose is not a, B, or C, your, your purpose is to tell others the good news of what I've done for you and for them. Right? Your purpose is to focus on Jesus. And imagine what would happen. I'll tell you what will happen. This church is going to stick together. <laughs> this church is going to get a new shepherd that will lead them into the future under the grace of God. More people are going to know about Jesus. More people are going to know about the love of God that saves. More people are going to know that they're not alone. More people are going to be touched by Jesus' amazing love. And you know what else is going to happen? Satan's going to lose his grip on you. Oh, he's going to try. He's going to try like hell to convince you that you're, you're alone, that, that all is lost, that there is no hope. He's going to try to convince you that, that you know, that sin is too great or, or that you don't measure up or that God couldn't love you if this or that. But then someone's going to come up alongside you and they're going to tell you what God has done for them and what God has done for you. They're going to come and they're going to tell you that, that, that God does love you, that God does have your back, that he's with you, that he's there for you, that he won't leave you, that he won't abandon you. It's going to remind you that you're forgiven and that God's still at work in your life and that you still have a purpose, a purpose that has really been the same, your purpose, my purpose, our purpose all along, and that's to give and to receive the grace of our God to love and to care for one another as God has first loved and cared for us. 
to forgive others when they have sinned and to repent and be forgiven when we have fallen short, to help and to be helped, to bear with one another in love and to support each other in good times and bad and to remind each other that we are not alone, to tell each other just how much our God has done for us through Jesus Christ. That's your purpose. That's your mission. Don't forget it. Friends, let's take an opportunity to, to pray to our God about these things. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you allowed us to gather with our family and friends around your word today in the comforts of our own home. Father, we thank you for, for the gift of technology which has allowed us to be able to do this even when we're not always able to be together in person. Lord, we thank you for, for giving us our purpose and reminding us of that purpose today. Father, forgive us for the times that we have failed, the times that we have been selfish and self-centered and only looked for our agenda and our purpose to be had instead of yours. Lord, as you help us to remember that love and that forgiveness that you have first shown to us, may we now go on mission and tell others the amazing things that God has done for us through our Savior Jesus Christ, so that they might know a love that forgives and saves, so that they might know the mercy and love of God. In the days ahead, as they get difficult and long, as, as we deal with our own personal issues, struggles in our families, and some of the issues that arise here at church, help us to be gentle and compassionate with one another. Help us to forgive each other as you have first forgiven us. Help us to be quick to listen and slow to speak, Help us to be quick to build up and slow to criticize. Help us to be quick to forgive and love because that's what you did for us. You are quick to forgive and love us even though we didn't deserve it. So Father, be with us in the days ahead. Be with our families, our friends, both near and far. And use us always as your ambassadors. Help us always to care at our purpose so that others may know you too. Father, we pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. Friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Friends, thanks again for joining me online today for worship. There's just a couple of, of announcements that, that I want to bring to your attention. First of all, life groups are active. You can go to our website and you can go uh, online to our app as well and sign up for a life group that works for you. Um, I can't stress of how important that is, especially at a time like we're at here at Ascension, to get together with one another, to love one another, to build each other up. And I think you're going to like it. Not only are you going to get together with fellow believers and get to, to build each other up, you're also going to be watching The Chosen, which is a great kind of mini-series talking about the life and times of Jesus. So, so go online, find a life group that works for you, and sign up today. Um, a couple of other things. Continue to keep Pastor Layman in your prayers. A couple weeks ago, that is the guy that, that God led you all to call to be your next shepherd. So keep him, keep his wife and kids and his church in your prayers as he thinks about and decides where God would best use his gifts and talents to bless his kingdom, whether that's here or staying in Michigan. So, so pray about that. Pray for, for ascension, that God will give us the shepherd that, that you truly need here, and we know that he will. Also, a couple of things uh, to, to mention. I'm hoping and praying that, that all the winter weather moves out and that we don't have any hiccups this week because this is my last week here at Ascension in Jacksonville with all of you as your pastor. And so a couple of things that I want to I make you aware of and that I want to invite you to. This coming Friday, um, my family and I will be at Buffalo Wild Wings, and it's just a laid-back opportunity to get together one last time to share a meal and just hang out uh, with all of you and, and tell stories and reminisce about all the amazing things that God has done for us here uh, in Jacksonville. So we would love for you to join us. If you could, RSVP. I still think you can RSVP on the app. 
Um, also, if, if, if you're struggling to figure that out, you can also RSVP by reaching out to our president, Jason. You could probably even tell the admin, our comm director at admin at ascensionjacks.com. Worst case scenario, if you can't figure any of that out, shoot me a text and let me know that you and your family will be joining us and I can put you on the list. We just need a number count so we can let Buffalo Wild Wings know how many people are coming. And finally, with that said, next Sunday, I'm hoping and praying that all of you can make it. Especially those of you who are local, certainly I would love for you to come and join me one last time as I have the opportunity to address you as your pastor to share the good news of Jesus with you one more time on my final Sunday here at Ascension. So I know uh, my wife and kids and I would love for you to join us for that final Sunday here at Ascension next week at 9 a.m. Uh, we'll have a service and then afterwards we'll have some time to hang out and, and have some fellowship for one more time. And so we would love for you to be with us next week. Hope to see you there. That's all the announcements I have. Hopefully you're staying warm, you're staying safe. Thanks again for joining me in worship today. And God bless you and God re remember, help you remember your purpose and who you are in him. Have a great week.